Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Silver Spring Blues Week. I'm Lisa Martin with Silver Spring Town Center. We're so happy to have blues music historian and musician Rick Franklin in the house presenting a program on the history of Piedmont blues, a journey through the lens of Black artists. Um, Rick is just uh, going to be on in a moment, but before he comes back, I'm okay. just going to tell you about a few things we have coming up with Silver Spring Blues Week. We have activities every day. We kicked off last night at the Buddy Guy show at Wolf Trap. Tomorrow night at Jay Hollinger's, we have a sold out show featuring Boogie Woogie Blues Man, Daryl Davis, and with the sweet vocals of Deletta Gillespie. That's at Jay Hollinger's on Colesville Road. Wonderful Jay Hollinger's Waterman's Chop House, which has wonderful seafood, steak, and other um, culinary delights. And they have a special um, Father's Day brunch and all day lunch going on on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So check out Jay Hollinger's. On Wednesday, we have a very special Silver Spring Blues Week taking place at the Quiner Farm. And it's, at, it's from 4 to 7 p.m. And we have music, the first and last hour with spice cake. And the middle hour from 5 to 6, we have Blues Through Poetry, hosted by award-winning poet and immediate past president of Silver Spring Town Center, uh, Brenda Bunting. And she will be joined by others for, for an open mic of Blues Through Poetry, which is always wonderful. And we will be sitting there under the, the grandiose tulip pop, pop, poplar at the corner farm at 737 Easley, right in downtown Silver Spring. Bring your own picnic. And we might have some wine to share with you. Um, we on Thursday night, we will have a blues jam hosted by Reggie Right Eye and the Missing Pieces at El Golfo from six to nine on El Golfo's patio. And then on uh, Friday, we have um, a double feature blues documentary uh, with two filmmakers. Uh, who one is called Masters of the Blues, which uh, covers uh, two blues artists, including Mark Muleman Massey from Mississippi, who is coming up for the Silver Spring Blues Festival this Saturday. Um, and there's also a documentary about him as well, or a short documentary about him as well. That's um, Friday evening, six to eight at the Silver Spring Civic Building. And then uh, festival day is all day, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. at downtown Silver Spring on Ellsworth Drive. We have an awesome lineup. The first hours are always the acoustic stage featuring artists from the Archie Edwards Blues Heritage Foundation. And these include the Archie Edwards Blues Ensemble at 10 a.m., Blue Panamus at 11. Noon, we have Women in Blues. 1 p.m., we have a special visitor from Milan, Italy, a blues artist who does original bl rural blues music from Italy, Ale Ponti, Ponti. Some of you may have seen him perform with Gerald Davis, Miles Spicer at Strathmore a few months ago. He is back in town and just sitting in as a, as a visitor, a guest of ours on uh, Saturday at one o'clock. And then two o'clock, we have Harmonica, a harmonica workshop hosted by the amazing Pearl Bales. Then we transition to our electrified stage at 3 p.m. with School of Rock. Those are all the all the teens who are really amazing musicians to get up there and light the stage on fire with electric blues. Then we will have Pepper featuring Jesse Terrell at four o'clock. Five o'clock, we have Fast Eddie and the Slowpokes. Um, six o'clock, we have Mark Muleman Massey from Mississippi. Uh, and then at 7 p.m., we have the Bone Shakers with Ron Holloway. And then Clarence of Bluesman Turner wraps up with his performance, his band, and then they all come out under Clarence's lead for a a very rocking blues jam from 9 to 10 p.m. on the festival stage. 
So all of our events are made possible with generous support from Montgomery County United Therapeutics, the Arts and Humanities of Montgomery County, Maryland State Arts, Montgomery College, and many others, including our Blues Festival sponsors like Jay Hollinger's, uh, Archie Edwards Blues Heritage Foundation, Nando's Perry Perry, American Design and Build, Ray Fudge Photography, and I see Ray Fudge is in the house. Ray is the one who captures all the wonderful photography each year at our festival. School of Rock, Archie Edwards Blues Heritage Foundation, um, Silver Spring Village, Lead Development Group, DC Blues Society, Image 360, El Golfo, Atomic Music, Blue Street Productions, Planet Cotton, WPFW FM, and the Charlie Coiner, uh, Charlie Coiner uh, Farm Project, and um, McGinty's, and as well as Courtyard by Marriott. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And now we will get started with the program. I will, I'd like to introduce you to our, um, our speaker who is here, Rick. Rick uh, hello everybody. Hello, hello. Yes, hello Rick. Rick Franklin was born in Alexandria, Virginia in 1952. In 1952, to a military family, the family traveled the U.S. and England until 1968, when the family returned to Virginia and when the family returned to Virginia and his father retired from military service. Since 1981, the Arlington, Virginia resident has been playing acoustic guitar and singing the blues at community events local festivals, international festivals, as well as various clubs, cafes, and other venues. Rick's musical style is an acoustic finger style blues with vocals known as Piedmont blues, which he's discussing today. Identified with such legendary players as Blind Blake, Blind Boy Fuller, and William Moore, along with players and friends like Bowling Green, John Cephas, John Jackson and Archie Edwards. Rick has taught guitar to youth and adults both nationally and internationally. He is personally committed to the preservation and diffusion of the blues, especially amongst the young. Rick has been on the European Blues Association Blues Week faculty, the Port Townsend Blues Week faculty, and the Augusta Heritage Center Blues Week faculty. He has been an executive board member of the DC Blues Society and helped organize and perform in the first annual DC Blues Festival. Uh, Rick also contributed to the DC Blues Society as a music critic for their monthly and quarterly publication. Um, in addition to solo performances and performances with harmonica Phil Wiggins, Rick also performs in the area with popular acoustic blues trio Franklin, Harp, and Usultan. Usultan. Usselton. Yeah. And the more recently popular acoustic blues trio, Rick Franklin and his Delta Blues Boys. Yes, sir. These groups perform blues and ragtime music and songs from the 1920s and 30s in the Memphis St. Louis guitar duet and Piedmont styles. Franklin, Harp, and Usselton have released a CD entitled Hokum Blues, and the trio has also been featured on cable television for Arlington, Fairfax, and Montgomery counties. Franklin and Harp have also re released a CD entitled Do in the Dozens. Rick's third release, Searching for Frank, is also a joint project with Mike Beethoven. Rick's latest release, Dancing with My Baby, is a joint project with Tom Mint. Rick Franklin and his Delta Blues boys have been featured on cable television for the DC metro area at events such as the Washington Folk Festival, Northern Virginia. Folk Festival, DC Blues Society Blues Festival, Columbia Pike Blues Festival, the Herndon Blues Festival, the National Portrait Gallery, Kennedy Center, Library of Congress, and at Arlington Schools as a member of the Arlington Public Schools Humanities Project. Ooh, he's a busy guy. Rick has also performed out at um, 
and performed at out of town events such as the Old Songs Festival in Altamont, New York, the Port Townsend Country Music Festival in Port Townsend, Washington, and the Cassata Blues Festival in Croatia, the Bristol Rhythm and Roots Festival in Bristol, Virginia, and for the Baltimore Blues Society. Welcome to the incredible Rick Franklin. So happy thank you. To have thank you. Everybody thank here you okay? Yes. yes. So people might want to know what is exactly Piedmont Blues? Well, it was a term that was given to this style of music by an ethnomusicologist. And basically, it's a finger picking style where I use my thumb to play the alternating bass line. And I use my other fingers, these three fingers, because I have a classical guitar background. Some of the earlier guys only used two fingers, and some might have even only used one. But it's a motion that, that goes like this, or it goes like this, or like this, with the alternating bass line going back and forth. I s sometimes look at it as um, bluegrass music slowed down because the Piedmont region is the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains that runs from uh, Maryland through Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, parts of Georgia, and even parts of Florida is incorporated in that. So there was a lot of crossover back in the day between the African American musicians and the uh, and the white musicians, and that included um, people from uh, all over the world, Ireland, Scotland. Um, they were Italians and stuff in the mining communities in, in the Appalachian Mountains. And so there was a lot of crossover with music. So this particular song that I'm going to open up with is one that's been played in the bluegrass tradition and it's also in the Piedmont style tradition and it has a lot of verses but I'm not going to do them all because it would take longer than the time slot that we have for right now but you can make up your own verses and that works also and it's called going down the road feeling bad and I'm going to add a little twist to it. <laughs> I'm going down the 
so I can hear that number nine as it rolls on down the like for fourth grade, one of the things they do for geography is that they, uh, they, um, ch they teach geography. And back in the day, there was um, what they called uh, three regions in Virginia. And one of them was the uh, Tidewater region One's the Piedmont region and the other one's the Appalachian region. And each one of those regions had their own um, music associated with it. The Tidewater region, which is mostly fishing and crabbing and that sort of industry had uh, a lot of call and response where you know, you're pulling up nets and, and, and dragging fish and stuff into the boat and things like that. So there's a lot of call and response songs and then in the Piedmont region, which I just demonstrated, was a lot of uh, party music. It was basically music that was played at parties after a um, nice harvest of whatever crops were in season at the time. And uh, hopefully I turned up my vocals a little bit. Can is, is that a little louder? Everybody out there, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, more more vocal i can turn the guitar down also if that's drowning it now that i understand that there's five regions that are being taught and i'm not sure about that but i have to fact check that at some point but a lot of these songs are based on true stories and I would like to let you know right up front that none of this has happened to me yet. So here is um, I met a little 
said, baby, let's talk. You can take me out for a nice long walk. Saw her husband standing by. I looked at the lady and I loudly cried. I ain't going that way. I ain't going that way. I'm sorry, folks. I ain't going that way. Now my friend tells me if I want to get well, I should come along with him and rob a hotel. When we get there, there's a cop outside. I looked at my buddy and I loudly cried. I ain't going that way. I ain't going that way. I'm sorry, boys. I ain't going that way. style there's a new way of loving drives the ladies wild when he gets through explaining it to me i looked at my buddy i said better never be i ain't going that way hurt my back i ain't going that way been right since i'm sorry folks I ain't going that way now my brother asked me to do a favor last night Carried down a pistol to a man named White. Tried to help my brother, but here's our fail. He wanted me to meet the man in front of the jail. I ain't going that way. I ain't going that way. I'm sorry, folks. songs that were done in Piedmont style were kind of like based on news events or they were based on uh, songs that were popular at the time that weren't necessarily done Piedmont style and uh, this next song that I like to do and I will talk about my guitar at some point is um, one that was really popular and I've come to discover that not only was it popular in the United States, it's uh, popular globally. And it's a sing along. So if you want to keep your mics muted, you can sing as long as loud as you want. 
and it goes like this. When 
skies are gray You'll never know, dear How much I love you Please don't take my sunshine away Please don't take my sunshine away So I've had a question about my guitar, which I planned on talking to you about. This is a design from the 1920s, although this instrument is nowhere near that old. They're remaking them again in San Luis Obispo, California, and it's a company called National, National Guitar, and the body is made out of steel and this was a design that was made in the like i said in the early 20s and the intent was to make an instrument that was louder than a wooden body guitar so like i said the body is made out of steel and if you see the letter t on here one here here and here and here there are three mechanical speakers in the body of the guitar and you can barely see the outline the circular outline of the speakers like down around the bottom here over here right over here is a mechanical speaker and the and the speakers are facing into the body of the guitar so instead of facing out like this, they face into the body of the guitar like this. And so what they did is they came up with a way to make a bridge, which is the letter T, and the bridge is where the strings come across. And the bridge then is connected to what would be the magnet on the back of a speaker. So if you can imagine, the speaker faces out like this. The magnet is a smaller piece in the back of the speaker. And what happens is, is the vibrations from the strings causes the magnet to pick up the vibrations and pass it on to the spun aluminum speakers. And they vibrate back and forth just like they would in your boom box or you know, even in your uh, headsets, whatever, whatever you're using for your speakers and it amplifies the sound so the sound then bounces off the back of the guitar and out the sound hole out the sound holes here um it's it's fairly heavy instrument and it travels quite well i got it mainly after um 9 11 and uh it was very difficult to travel with any kind of metal instrument back then so i um was able to locate this on ebay and um, I've had it ever since. It's um, quite an instrument. Um, historically speaking, uh, cats like Tampa Red used to play a tricone. Um, there's another um, um, artist out of Argentina named Oscar Aleman that used to play this, this particular instrument. And it's good for jazz chords. It's good for um, rhythm sections. And the design was two Czechoslovakian brothers that had immigrated to the United States. And like I said, they patent they patented these instruments. You can do a Google patent search for all you gearheads out there and, and see the actual insides and the diagrams of how the instrument is constructed and how the pieces are put together. But there was, from what I heard, there was a marketing guy that convinced one of the brothers, like I said, they were the Dopiera brothers, to build the same instrument, but to take the speaker and flip it around so it faces out just like you would in your amplifier. And uh, still at the time, the pickup had not been invented, so that's why they came up with this particular invention to make the guitar louder. Um, as my buddy Archie Edwards used to say, this was a design before the guitar was electrocuted. So, <laughs> um, he convinced the the one brother to take the speaker and face it out and once he faced it out he had to come up with a whole different type of bridge arrangement 
for the strings to come across to cause the speaker to vibrate. So if you were to look at a clock, and we're talking about not a digital clock, but a clock that has 12, 6, 3, and 9 on it, they had to come up with a bridge that resembled the face of a clock. So they had to have a piece of wood going from the 12 to the 6. They had to have a piece of wood going from the 3 to the 9. They had to have a piece from the 10 to the 4 and from the 2 to the 6 or the 8 position. And they call that a spider bridge. This bridge here is called a biscuit bridge. So the spider bridge now has the speaker facing out. And this Dopier brother decided to call his instrument a dobro. So that is the difference between this instrument and a dobro, is the way the speaker faces either in towards you or out towards the audience. Um, the neck is a regular um, maple hardwood neck. Um, and I got regular tuning keys on it. In my particular instrument, I play uh, in standard tuning. Um, and I use a capo if I need to um, to go up and to change the key. Uh, I play a lot of the chords out of the first first position. And what I mean by first position is down around here, this part of the neck. So, so, there, so there's an E chord, there's a C chord, there's an F chord, and I can add a seventh to it. Here's a D chord. Here's an A chord. And if I need to, 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 to go up on it, then I can use um, what they call a capo. And what the capo does is it actually shortens the neck of the guitar. So here, here's an open. This is what an open is. And if I go to this position, it just moved it up a whole step moved all the strings up a whole step. So one of my favorite Piedmont guitar players, and I told you that uh, that was a term coined by an ethnomusicologist or two, um, was a guy named Mississippi John Hurt. And uh, he, part of Mississippi he's from is a long ways from the, the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Mississippi John Hurt got rediscovered during the uh, folk revival, and he actually uh, lived in D.C. for a while with uh, Archie, Archie Edwards, who I learned a bunch of stuff from. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Archie after I do this song. And uh, this is a song about uh, maybe um, a reti retirement plan, or maybe what you want done after. And it goes something like this. my body out in the sea save all the undertaker bills let the mermaids flirt with me I do 
not work for pleasure it's the peace i have no more only reason that i work at all is keep the wolf from me from the my door when my earth lit trials are over i cast my body out in the sea save all the undertaker bills let the mermaids flirt with me Thank you. And so, we, Leanne had a question for you earlier about your, okay. your wonderful shirt. Tell us about your shirt and the design. This, this is a design that's uh, called 3D. And it does look 3D, three-dimensional for sure. And uh, I accidentally came across it while I was thumbing through, I don't know, T-shirts looking for something that I could wear during the farmer's markets in the summer or some things like that. And I discovered a, a whole different line of uh, different type of t-shirts done in this 3D type pattern. Um, it's really interesting because you see it, you see it a fair amount in, in carpeting and things like that. And, then, and it's like, wow, yeah, that works. That can work as a, as, as an attention getter or, um, causes people to you know wonder if they're uh, having a flashback or something you know back from the uh, lsd days for all you old folks out there 
but uh it's readily available um i got mine off of amazon so you can you find a whole different whole line of these types of shirts and i've noticed that uh, i've watched some of the track and field events lately and i've seen some of the the runners and stuff are wearing 3d type shirts also so it's a style that seems to be catching on and i don't mind promoting it i think everybody will look good in a 3d shirt as long as it's the right size So that song that I did about the mermaids, let the mermaids flirt with me, saving all the undertaker bills, um, reminds me of uh, my friend, uh, John Jackson, who was uh, a grave digger by profession, in case you weren't aware of that. Um, and John Jackson, they said, was one of the last people to let you down, being a grave digger. Um, his buddy, or my other buddy, Archie Edwards, <laughs> was from uh, Franklin County, Virginia. And Franklin County, Virginia was known at one point as the moonshine capital of the world. Um, Archie and his barbershop, he'd always have a refrigerator in the back of the barbershop that had a couple of different varieties of moonshine in it. Um, and as a result of being the moonshine capital of the world, people would have to soup up their cars in order to outrun the tax people and the revenuers, they called them. And that was also the birthplace of NASCAR. So we got a lot of things going on in Virginia. And here's a blues song for you. Seems like everybody tries to put me down Yes, I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man, understand Went to the train station, looked up on the wall My money was so light, baby, couldn't go I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man, understand? You see the burden I carry, so heavy, you see, ain't nobody in this world. Things come to those who wait. Yes, I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man. Understand?
traveled from town to town. Seems like everybody tries to put me down. Yes, I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man. Understand? Went to the train station, looked up on the wall. My money was so light, baby, couldn't go nowhere at all. Yes, I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man. Understand? You see the burden I carry, so heavy. You see, ain't nobody in this world. Now, baby, just give me a break. Good things come to those who wait. Yes, I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man. Understand? about um, your uh, work with some of these Piedmont legends, right? Yeah, um, there was, it was quite an experience. I um, started out playing guitar when I was um, in high school and I started playing electric guitar. Um, and started playing in bands, doing playing Jimi Hendrix and playing Eric Clapton type stuff. And it got to the point to where I got tired of hauling around all that equipment and decided to um, take up classical guitar. And I went to classical guitar lessons at Northern Virginia Community College. And I met a guy in, in the class and he asked me if I'd heard of any of these Piedmont style guys like Blind Blake, like um, um, Jesse Fuller, some of the Reverend Gary Davis, some of the cats from, from the East Coast. Um, there was a whole treasure trove of East Coast musicians that uh, not only fit into the, the Piedmont style, but the whole East Coast blues th style thing. And I said, no, I, I had never heard of them. I mean, the only blues group that I had ever heard of was uh, Paul Butterfield Blues Band out of Chicago. I didn't know anything about acoustic blues back in the day. And uh, I went to the uh, Washington Folk Festival one year and I saw John Jackson there and I saw Archie Edwards there. And um, I had already been working in, 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 in the classical guitar lessons and stuff getting my fingers and stuff together so i could do the finger picking and things like that instead of playing with a pick and uh, and from there i discovered that okay in addition to what i was doing with these three fingers there was a whole nother routine going on with my thumb with the alternating bass and uh i got to talking with these guys to john jackson and to archie edwards and uh they asked me to to play to play along you know sit in hey come on uh, archie said i i got i closed my barber shop up at one o'clock on saturdays uh come on by and uh we're doing some picking and um john jackson invited me out to his house in in, in fairfax station where he lived and so it was all local i mean john um archie's barber shop was over on bunker hill road which is uh near catholic university so that wasn't that big of a trip from Arlington and John Jackson out of Fairfax station wasn't a big trip out of from Arlington and uh, but I never realized I didn't realize the extent that these guys were known globally until 
I um, was in the library one day in her in Arlington County, and I was going through the the blues books, looking for material and looking for stories about different people. And I ran across uh, uh, blues, you know, who's who in blues. And uh, there was a picture of John Jackson. And they almost threw me out of the library because I made so much noise. I couldn't believe it. John Jackson, what? You know, and uh, <laughs> and and from there we, you know, we hooked up with the DC Blue Society, that was uh, that that was founded with uh, with the help of uh, John Cephas, who was playing with Phil Wiggins at the time, and um, there was another blues lady in, in DC named Flora Moulton, who played on the streets there by the old Woodies, in in, in downtown DC. And it was like, wow, we got a whole gang of folks here that that can play, that can play this style of music. And as a result of that, we ended up, uh, you know, at different festivals. We ended up, uh, there was a Northern Virginia Folk Festival that was run here in Arlington for a number of years uh, with um, radio announcer Mary Cliff, who's still on uh, WERA here in Arlington. She helped organize a lot of the Northern Virginia Folk Festivals that were held here at uh, Thomas Jefferson Community Center. And as a result of that, we played there and then we come over in my backyard here in Arlington and play some more. And uh, my wife would make a pot of beans and we would just have a good old time. Uh, and and that that was ex that, that's how that whole community kind of came together. Um, Phil Wiggins has been in my backyard. Um, I played I played some music for John Cephas and and what was really when I preferred when I played for John Cephas it was at Archie's Barbershop and we we're doing a fundraiser. Um, I kind of realized I might be onto something when um, Franklin Harp and Usselton played one of our songs and John Cephas got up and was dancing to it. So I think I said, I think I might be on to something here and I'll keep at it. But that was been my, my main involvement um, with the folks locally here. And then as a result of, of um, teaching some of the uh, camps and stuff that I, that I taught at over the years, I met some of the other uh, other, other nationally known uh, acoustic blues players and um got a chance to spend some time with them so it's it's, it's been it's been an interesting interesting change of events going from electric to acoustic guitar so i hope that answers your question yes um, maybe i think some folks have been commenting did you want to take a question or two from the audience absolutely if you want to raise your hand, either using the icon or just or just jump in, just unmute yourself and. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Um, I can play some more. I'll play another song while you're thinking about it. Okay, I think um, there was a co there's a comment. Uh, oh, people were talking about all the places that they have seen these various uh, legendary yeah. folks. And like I said, I never realized, I never realized the extent of uh, of the, the global presence that these guys had. You know, they, they've been all over. And I was like, okay, I can appreciate that. But uh, there was a question about Lewis Collins. Um, I don't play Lewis Collins. I've played it with Phil before, but I've accompanied him on it. Um, Mississippi John Hurt definitely is one of my favorites. Um, but another one of my favorites that I would like to play is uh, Hank Williams. He was really popular in the Piedmont community. And this is a, this is a half of a love song by Hank Williams.
you love me half as much as I love you. You wouldn't worry me half as much as you do. You're nice to me when there's no one else around. as much as I miss you You wouldn't stay away half as much as you do Now you know the reason I'm so blue If you only love me half as much as I love you If you love me half as much as I love you You wouldn't worry me half as much as you do You're nice to me when there's no one else around You only build me up to let me as much as I miss you You wouldn't stay away half as much as you do Now you know the reason I'm so blue If you only love me half as much as I love you Mr. Hank Williams. All right. Well, I'd like to I'd like to play one more if it's okay. Okay, so the question um the picture that that you guys might have seen of me with Archie and John Cephas, or John Jackson, I'm sorry, John Jackson, Archie, and myself was taken at a Northern Virginia Community College back in the 90s, I believe it's 1994. And it was for a Black History Month presentation. And it just so happened that, that February, we had experienced quite a snowstorm in February. And there was a lot of uh, traffic issues and, and 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 dissatisfied people as a result of you know the the, the plowing and the weather response and everything because it took a lot of people by surprise and they weren't prepared for it and i think it was that was back in the day when they probably only had one or two people uh, doing the weather on channel four you know willard might have been just willard scott by himself so it was difficult for everybody to look around and get their get their story correct but that was uh, an event sponsored by the DC Blue Society one of the very early early events and like I said it was held at Northern Virginia Community College here in Alexandria Alexandria campus so that was, that's the story behind that photo and I like to close with uh, with with one of the songs, uh, traditional Piedmont style song that was used to close up uh, parties and things like that at the end of the evening. And basically, what it boiled down to is that uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And it goes like this.
last Saturday night I got married Me and my wife settled down Now me and my wife have parted I think I'll go walking in town Sometimes I live in the country Sometimes I live in town Sometimes I take so great notion To jump in the river Stop rambling, stop gambling, stop staying out late at night. Come home to your wife and family and stay by the fire side bright. Irene, good night, Irene. Sometimes she sleeps in pajamas Sometimes she sleeps in a gown When both are in the laundry Irene, she's the talk of the town Yeah, this is that's a so, true story. Yeah, we, yeah, it brings to mind a question I had. How would you explain what makes the blues so unique compared to other genres of music? We were at Betty Guy last night and he he was getting a little racy there, as you know, he can do. And um you you I think you we tend to find um more honesty in blues, maybe and more natural. And and also a sense of humor. Yeah, and it's it's kind of storytelling, mm -hmm. you know. And it, it is it's about the storytelling, and you have to throw the emotion into it too, because there's feelings that there's feelings about the story that you're telling, mm -hmm. and and that and that's the way I look at it. And it's not just the blues too. I mean, some of the country songs, any song in particular definitely if it's got a good beat then um you can add add a storyline to it you can you can have something that sounds really melodic and really up up tempo and then you're singing about something that's not quite no no that doesn't go like that and, and i find that even though some of the some of the songs can get kind of risque and the double entendre where you know i'm singing about singing about um, um peaches and i'm not really singing about peaches 
I'm singing about something else. But the beat is such that, you know, I noticed that when I do farmer's markets and things like that, the little kids pick up, pick up on the beat. They pick up on, 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 on the beat and, and uh, start dancing to it. And uh, the parents are listening to what I'm saying about it and they're going, okay, uh-huh, all right, I get it. Um, and, and that's the thing, that's the thing I find, I find about it is the storytelling and the, um, the way you express it to the, to the music that's provided. Right. And who originally wrote Good Night, Irene? Oh, it was written by, oh, I can't, I, it's a guy out of, um, out of the Midwest. I will come to me a second. But, is it Eric Clapton? It's a song by Eric Clapton, but. No, no, no. It goes back further than that. It goes back further than that. Um, Jesse Lord Davis. In yes, Jesse Lord. Yes. Gussie. Gussie. Yeah, and I, I suspect he didn't have that. Um, some of the lyrics you did toward the end. Does it, but that that, that's good. another one of those songs where lyrics have been added to it. Yes, depending on the circumstances. Right. But he his his circumstances were were, were very interesting. He applied for. Uh, um, to a music school in the Midwest and got accepted there. It was kind of like Juilliard or, or one of those music schools out there in the Midwest. And once he showed up for the classes and they saw that he was black, this is no, nope, no, nope. you can't take any classes here. So he ended up getting a job as a janitor with the college. And that's how he furthered his music career. He was able to sit in on the music classes, the music theory classes and things like that. And that's how he um, he developed his his musical repertoire and wrote songs like that and has a catalog of stuff. So. Oh, great. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't yep. all of that. I just pulled him up on um, Wikipedia. He was born yep. in 1863. And then uh, died in 1899, quite young. Yep. So he he was born right at the end of the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And there was still all the Jim Crow stuff and segregation and everything was still on. And that's that's how he developed his musical career, was working as a janitor there at the music school. Great. OK. Yeah. Interesting. Well. Do we have we have time for uh, some questions if anybody yeah. has for for Rick? Maybe um, Ray, did you have a question for Rick? I know I know you probably know each other. Ray is our photographer. If I could. Yeah, I remember Ray from. Uh, uh, no, I have none. I was just admiring your shirt yeah. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, I was just thinking that Good Night Irene was one of my grandfather's favorites. Yep. He, he played an old 78 record over and over. It's, that's one of those songs that, you know, I went over to, when I was in Europe, I played it, and it turns out that there's a, a soccer team out of uh, out of Ireland, I believe, that that's, that is their team song, is Good Night Irene. And I go, okay, yeah, that'll work. Just like You Are My Sunshine, you know, everybody has heard that song. Um, in all parts of the world, so music, music is uh, can be universal, that's for sure. And it's constantly being borrowed. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, and repurposed, transformed. I mean, cultures in general. Yeah. It's constantly being borrowed. So, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So tell well, us, talk a little about the importance of festivals in your opinion, because I know you play a lot at the Washington Folk Festival. It, you know, it depends on, it, it depends on who organizes the folk festival and what the focus is. Like if I, um, if you go to say, for example, um, Merle Fest, okay then you're going to find uh, a whole diff different thing of banjo players and, and 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 a whole different style 
style style of music is focused there at Merle Fest. So it depends on it depends entirely on how the festival is organized and, and what kind of performers that they're looking at. Um, for example, uh, one of my favorite festivals is the Bristol Rhythm and Roots Festival, which is down in Bristol, um, Virginia, Tennessee. Um, if you've never been down to Bristol before, half of the street, half of the city is in Tennessee, and the other half is in Virginia. And the thing that I found pretty crazy about that whole situation is that the bars on the Virginia side close at midnight or one o'clock. And if you cross the street on the Tennessee side, the bars are open until two or three in the morning. So, and they tend to have not only the traditional style music, but they have up and coming, like Lisa, you, you, you suggested of people adapting these styles of music to contemporary styles. So you see some younger folks out there and their inter interpretation of some of these songs. And, and, and so that that is interesting. That That is interesting when you can, you know, rub elbows with with people of all different ages and 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 take take part and appreciate some of the things that their their musical interpretations are. Right, there's a lot of creative uh, exchange among participants of, in festivals. It goes on even behind the scenes after hours. Um, you know, there's a lot of creativity germinating. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. blossoming. So we have a question from Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hi. 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 It's good to see you, Rick. Good to see you again. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your performance. It's it's really wonderful. And I'm curious to know, is there anything that you're really interested in or that you're exploring or discovering right now in the genre that you're excited about? Mm. I think exposing and introducing this type of music to the younger folks, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about um, the storytelling aspect of it and how to get younger people involved in the storytelling involved in the, the the creativity of of the music whether it be on guitar or cigar box guitars and things of that sort um there is um like in arlington county here there is a whole history of of segregation and desegregation that that finally came to head in the 60s believe it or not um, it used to be, and, I, and I've met some people my age in Arlington, that um, if, if you were an expected mother in Arlington County and you were Black, you did not deliver your child here in Arlington County. You had to go to D.C. And so I've met people that are from Arlington that have D.C. birth certificates because their moms couldn't deliver in in Arlington County here uh, at the hospital and it's that's getting the stories across getting people uh, familiar with what was going on and where we're going to go from there is what excites me um, there's a lot of um, backlash about that sort of thing and they've they've assigned uh, uh, terms for for this sort of thing that uh, I think are very misleading. And what we're trying to do is education to get the education across as to what really happened. And that it's not your fault or it's not anybody else's fault that are alive today, but this is what happened and this is a fact. And we need to you know, accept that and move on and keep moving on sort of thing. And that, that, that sort of thing kind of excites me dealing with, dealing with uh, some of the younger people um, it also excites me when I see older folks, older folks like like uh, Raymond was talking about his um, his father um, playing Goodnight Irene or his grandfather, uh, that uh, the, the older folks still appreciate that, that kind of stuff too. And it, it, it gives me a smile on my face when I see people recognizing 
what's going on and what I'm trying to get across musically. So I hope that answered your question. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. What about for us middle-aged folks that want to learn more about the history? <laughs> where, um, can, where can we learn more about that? You know, keep keep go coming to festivals like, like Silver Spring and you'll see like an Archie Edwards Blues Heritage Foundation is trying to get that across, get that point across. Um, there is uh, some organizations like... Uh, PiedmontBlues.com out of uh, North Carolina is sponsoring a bunch of events. They're out of, uh, I think they're out of the Raleigh-Durham area, but uh, they're, they're sponsoring events. Silver Spring Blues Festival definitely is keeping up with it. Washington Folk Festival, which was the first weekend in June, is definitely keeping up with uh, n not only this type of music, but the, all music from all over the world, music and dance and storytelling, that sort of thing. Right. Do you have a website? I do. And my website is uh, www.hokum, H-O-K-U-M, blues.com. And there it is posted in the chat. Great. Thank you. Yep. Great. I'm excited yeah. to learn more. Yep. Thank you very much for this evening. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, this is This is therapy for me also. So. And what does hokum mean? You were telling me when we first got on together. Yes. Uh, in now, case for folks who don't know. Now, Piedmont style blues is the technique that I'm doing with the finger picking. Hokum is a marketing term for a style of music that was done in the 20s. And it was double entendre stuff. And if you some of the some of the people that did these type of hoke and blues songs are uh, Tampa Red, you can check out some of his stuff. Um, the Mississippi Sheiks, And in particular, a guy named Bo Carter. It's Tampa. He's from Tampa, Florida, Tampa Red. Um, the Mississippi Sheiks, featuring Bo Carter, a guy named Bo Carter, he did a lot of uh, uh, hokum style stuff and believe it or not there's a guy named uh, georgia tom dorsey who did hokum stuff and the thing about georgia tom dorsey is that he later became a gospel songwriter he had some issues some family issues that left him devastated and he stopped playing hokum blues and started doing uh, gospel songs and tom dorsey is the 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 songwriter for precious lord so those are some examples of the people that were they were using that they were marketing uh with hokum and there's a couple of different groups called uh hokum hokum blues the hokum boys is another one that did uh the song the song that i did uh ain't going that way is another hokum song done by the Hokum boys. Yeah, so Archie Edwards, yeah, the 25th anniversary in October. Yep. Right. I, th I see some, we have time for another question. If, um, did you have a question, Carol Rose? I see you're coming. Um, oh, okay. You just turned your camera on. Is all. That's fine. Hi, I Carol. just wanted to say hi. Hi, Carol. Oh, come and say hi. Hi. How are you? I really enjoyed this evening, so I'm happy. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. It's funny how happy the blues make you, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You know, the song sound, the melody sounds great and everything. And then all of a sudden, yeah, oh, oh okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a true story, but it didn't happen to me. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for everybody for, for, for coming out on this. Yes, and I thank you so much to Rick Franklin. I I, I posted. Um, we can make a tip. You have a virtual tip bucket, uh, where people can just go to PayPal and enter your email, bigbluesman at gmail .com. And where where can folks see you performing next? 
Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be at the Columbia Pike Farmer's Market from about 9 until noon Sunday morning. Um, and then I have to look at my schedule, but I don't think I have anything. I'm kind of winding down for the end of this month. And I've got, uh, but if you go to my website, I will post, um, different places that I play at. Like I said, I mostly do farmers markets and things like that. Um, I like, I don't mind getting up early and, and, and playing for the kids and the families and things like that. I was just recently out at, uh, Bethesda farmers market. I'm, I'm kind of in rotation out there, which is a good market. Uh, but my whole philosophy about places to play is I, I, generally don't travel around that much um i've stayed close to home a lot lately because the farmers markets the local farmers markets around here get anywhere from a couple of thousand people um in, in that time slot coming through so i can reach as many people as i can if i play an auditorium or i play you, you know uh, um, play a stadium somewhere I can reach that same number of people. Um, I used to play at the um, the, the uh, Food and Drug Administration used to have a farmer's market across from the Smithsonian. And um, they would have their, uh, the, the Smithsonian Folklife Festival would come through, would be at the same time I'd be playing at the market and, and there'd be a few thousand people coming through when, with, within a few hours. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made is that I made it an announcement to the crowd that I would accept uh, accept money in my tip buckets from whatever country you came from. And I ended up with all kinds of stuff, different denominations of stuff. I did not know what it was and you know, how much it was worth or, or what was I going to do with it, you know? you know go to the airport and try to cash it in or what i don't know but i didn't make that mistake again i never i asked for dollars or right u.s cash only cash or, or i've gotten then, me metro cards people have put metro yeah. cards in in my tip oh, bucket okay. so oh, that's not bad no that is, that's helpful sure yeah yeah that's great and uh well um and folks can see more Piedmont Blues, of course, throughout Silver Spring Blues Week, including this Wednesday at the Corner Farm when we have Spice Cake with mm -hmm. Miles Spicer and Yaya's duo, who does acoustic Piedmont. And they're performing four to seven, but the hour in between five to six, we have Blues Through Poetry hosted by Silver Spring Town Center's um, immediate past president, award-winning poet Brenda Bunting is hosting an open mic, a blues through poetry open mic. And the, the poetry um, shares are really interesting too. And then you can see kind of how the words wordsmithing goes on and and then um, and then gets connected to the music later. So and the storytelling using the words alone alone. Um, and then, of course, on Festival Day, Saturday, as was mentioned, the Archie Edwards Blues Heritage Foundation artists are always in our early lineup, the acoustic stage lineup from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, we have a special guest also coming in from Italy. So it's uh, he's our first Italian and maybe foreign born, uh, not, not foreign born, but coming in from another country blues artist uh, Ale Ponti, who has mm -hmm. become a fast friend of the Archie Edwards uh, musicians, and he's performing at one o'clock. So it's it's interesting. To see. The blues is well loved, I know, all over Europe. I've, I've been, uh, I went to Buddy Guy last night, and I've seen him many times at festivals across Ireland and the UK. Mm -hmm. He does. The, he's been doing that festival circuit and beyond across Europe, probably, for since since before I knew about him. Um, you know, I discovered him probably in the in the nineties, really, with backpacking around, and so 
but anyway, this this has been a great a great time, Rick, and we uh, we we sure appreciate you sharing your music and your wisdom with us, and you getting us real excited to hear more Piedmont blues in particular. Um, and join us on Wednesday at the Coiner Farm for our Blues Week picnic, if you like. It's yeah. it's a nice vibe, a little oasis in the heart of downtown Silver Spring. It's an acre lot of, it's a real working farm yeah, and yeah. it's from 4 to 7 p.m. with Spice Cake performing and then also the Blues to Poetry. So thank you again and folks in the comments are are giving their thanks and we'll have this recording up on Silver Spring Town Center's YouTube page soon. Thank you again to Rick Franklin for a wonderful time and get your blues t-shirt. I got your t-shirt, Rick. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll check the size colors. and get back to you. Yeah. You've got the bone shakers image. Yeah, of thank you. You're coming with Ron Holloway uh, to our festival on Saturday oh, yeah. night. Gifted horn player for sure. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. So come and catch their show if you can in the evening. It all, it, their stage really starts, you know, rocking by the end of the night with the jam. Also, Clarence of Blues Van Turner mm -hmm. is also performing with his band and leading the jam with all these stellar artists. I saw the Bone Shakers just this past Saturday at um, Titter Hill. Oh. Yeah, they're they're on tour now of the East Coast. So good for them. Yes. Well, well thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for yeah. considering me for this. This has been a blast. Yes. We'll have we look forward to having you back on stage too. Yeah.